America's first three Apollo astronauts were trapped and killed by a flash fire that swept their moonship early tonight during a... In the winter of 1967, a critical moment in history unfolded as President John F. Kennedy's dream of landing a person on the moon faced a big problem. A new spaceship was delayed by three months, causing the first manned Apollo mission to be pushed to February 1967. The challenges ahead were immense, with repeated testing failures hampering progress. February the 21st. For that was to be the beginning of the 14-day flight for a three-man spaceship, a prelude to man's landing on the moon. At the top of Saturn, the capsule would be just over 200 feet from the ground. At all stages, check upon check was made. So far, space had cost no American lives. Three brave men. Newcomer Roger Chaffee and experienced astronauts Gus Grissom and Ed White were set to launch on Apollo 1. However, they had serious issues with the new spacecraft. Was it safe and efficient enough? The three astronaut had great skepticism. Worried about too much flammable material inside, they spoke up to Joseph Shea, the manager in charge. They even made a light-hearted joke about their concerns with a mock crew portrait. Despite NASA's past success, a hidden problem surfaced. Flight director Gene Kranz admitted, success had become almost routine for us. The space agency and the country had grown too comfortable. Even after orders to remove flammable materials, the dangerous items stayed in the Apollo 1 module. How few of us ever think of the enormous wealth of knowledge and the training behind the making of astronauts. For the Moon Project as a whole, mobilizes America's finest scientific and engineering brains. For all that, something failed. Not at the moments of highest danger, the blast off, or in outer space, or on re-entering our atmosphere, but on Earth, in the capsule. With only 25 days left before launch, the Apollo 1 crew, on a sunny day in Florida, climbed the launch pad tower for a routine test. Dressed in their spacesuits, carrying air conditioning packs, they crossed the catwalk before entering the command module on the massive rocket. Grissom noticed a strange odor. The capsule had a smell of soured buttermilk. Air samples were taken but revealed nothing untoward. The night before the routine test, fellow astronaut and Grissom's childhood friend Wally Shira pulled Grissom aside. He too hated the Block 1 design. He said, If you get the slightest glitch, get out of there. I don't like it. Wally Shira saw what NASA evidently could not. In a seemingly harmless plugs-out test, where the module ran on its own power, trouble brewed. The hatch sealed shut, and with the astronauts inside, pure oxygen filled the cabin. Minor issues and communication troubles delayed the countdown, creating discomfort as darkness fell around the launch pad. Suddenly, a flash startled engineers watching the capsule. A spark ignited from faulty wiring, setting off a quick and devastating fire. Fueled by pure oxygen, the fire tore through flammable materials. Panic erupted as the astronauts struggled to escape. His transmission ended with a scream that was blood-curdling, both in its brevity and its agony. Then, a haunting silence fell over the launch pad. Rescuers rushed to the capsule with extinguishers, but thick smoke and toxic fumes made visibility almost zero. The intense heat burned through gloves, making it impossible to reach the astronauts in time. It took more than five minutes to open the hatch, and by then, the crew had little chance to escape.
any sort of a spark. Uh, it's, it's a highly volatile thing, pure oxygen. And uh, apparently from the early evidence from the capsule, uh, it, it went and it went fast. These men were breathing pure oxygen. They, they, in a sense, were part of this immediate momentary by the second disaster, millisecond disaster. And uh, if there is anything that can be rationalized about their deaths, it undoubtedly was instantaneous. The fire, as history remembers it, came close to derailing America's lunar goals. After Grissom and Chaffee were buried at Arlington and White laid to rest at his beloved West Point, recrimination began. North American aviation and NASA's poor oversight were mauled by the press, public, and lawmakers alike. This tragedy raised more and more questions. Was this fire a result of a hidden race for space supremacy with Russia? Was it a wrong priority of speed over safety? Gus Grissom's words, spoken just weeks before his death, lingered. The conquest of space is worth the risk of life. Despite the tragedy, NASA continued with the Apollo program, but it took over 20 months before American astronauts returned to space. During this time, thousands of changes were made, including redesigning the hatch, adjusting the cabin atmosphere, and removing flammable materials. The sacrifices of Grissom, White, and Chaffee led to essential safety improvements. Eventually, in July 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon and returned safely to Earth. Does the law of averages, so far as the possibility of a catastrophic failure, bother you at all, sir? No, you sort of have to put that out of your mind. There's always a possibility that uh, you can have a catastrophic failure, of course. It's going to happen on any flight. It can happen on, on the last one as well as the first one. So uh, you just plan as best you can to take care of uh, all of these eventualities. And uh, you get a well-trained crew. and they go fly. I, I look forward a great deal to, uh, to the first flight. There's a great deal of uh, pride involved in making a first flight. So I think I'm, I'm looking forward to the flight with a great deal of anticipation. I think everybody feels a little apprehensive uh, when they count down. I don't see how you could help but be a little bit excited. But I don't think anybody is... Uh, you know, I, I don't like to use the word scary. I, I definitely think you're apprehensive and you're considering what's involved there. You're thinking about it. But you know how to handle it and take care of it and do the job. If you like this video, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.